Howdy guys and welcome to Cliff Notes. This is a recap of The Amazing Race, episode seven. Now, for those of you who need a little bit of refresher from episode six, remember that in the last episode, we had seven teams all competing in Berlin, Germany. And at the end of that particular competition, we saw that the last place team uh, were the, the sisters, Haley and Kalen. Now, this wasn't the first time that they had come in last place, but they got lucky previously because it was a non-elimination leg. Well, guess what? This leg is another non-elimination. This is the luckiest team in the entire season. This is twice they've come in last and twice that they get to keep on racing. So as we get into episode seven, we are going to again see all, all seven teams racing in this next segment uh, of the race itself. Now I was watching when the teams left to try to get a feel for just how close Haley and Kalen may have been to the rest of the teams uh, when they checked in in Berlin. And what I discovered was this, the first five teams that left uh, tonight uh, to head on to the next segment of the challenge, uh, it turns out they had all finished within an hour of each other. So they were very close, the, these first five teams. Uh, Eshwar and Arpana were maybe an hour later than the first five teams, but Haley and Kalen, they finished more than four hours later after Gary and D'Angelo who had won first place in Berlin. And they were more than two hours behind uh, Ashwar and Arpana who were the second to last team. So Haley and Kalen were way behind all the rest of the teams while they were fighting it out in Germany. There's no way they would have ever been able to make up that kind of time lead. So they were incredibly lucky it was a non-elimination leg. And they're even more lucky because they're all flying to another country. They're all on the same airplane. So they're starting to all even up once again. This is such a lucky team. Uh, now, when, when they all, before they, they take off, I, I was watching, I noticed that all of the teams between the checkpoint in Berlin and before they take off for this next segment, they all spent the evening together sleeping in some sort of campers that were jet stream type campers that were inside a building, a hostel perhaps. I don't know, but it looked, looked like a pretty cool way to spend the evening. But we do see them all talking and hanging out together before they take off on the next leg of the race. And where is that next leg going to be? Where are these seven teams headed to? Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan, for those of y'all who don't know, former part of the Soviet Union. It's in Central Asia. Uh, the, they mentioned it's the ninth largest country in the world. It's the largest country that doesn't have an ocean touch. It's a landlocked country. Uh, so they're heading to, to Kazakhstan. And uh, there's a lot of oil and gas in Kazakhstan. Uh, and I've visited quite a few times as a result. And, and as I said, it, it's really interesting. It, it's part of the Soviet Union for many years, and yet it's still Central Asian. It has a lot of influence from Mongolia and Ottomans and such. It's 70% Muslim. So there's an interesting mix of, of people and cultures as a result of it being kind of right here in the crosswords, uh, crossroads of Southern Asia, part of the Silk Road route and everything else. It, it's a cool country to, to go to but very little in the way of tourism. So not a lot of people have been to, been to Kazakhstan before. A uh, couple interesting facts uh, before we get back to the race. First of all, Kazakhstan is the home of the first satellite and the first human space launches uh, because the Soviet Union actually had their launch facility there in Kazakhstan. And they still land a lot of their spaceships that land parachutes, uh, land on the ground. They land in Kazakhstan even today. So big space center, even though you wouldn't expect it looking uh, at the country itself. So another little story, the very first time I was in Almaty, Kazakhstan, and that's where they're heading. This is the capital, Almaty. I spent the night in the VIP lounge of the airport waiting for a flight that would take me on to another city within the country. The only other person in this entire lounge throughout the entire evening was a professional bagpipe player from Scotland who had been hired to play at the wedding of some very rich Kazakh uh, family whose daughter was marrying someone from Scotland. So they'd hired a bagpipe player. So I spent the entire evening talking about being a professional bagpiper. A really, really weird way to spend an evening in Kazakhstan. Uh, on the return of that trip, while I was in the Almaty airport waiting for my flight home, I was playing The Last Samurai, that movie with Tom Cruise. And within five minutes of starting the movie, I was surrounded by probably a dozen kids and adults I was watching on my laptop. And I was just surrounded by a crowd who all wanted to watch this movie with me. Uh, one grade school kid who spoke English would translate everything that was said to everyone else in the whole crowd around. So everyone stayed, watched the, the whole movie. It was so much fun. When the movie was over, I took the DVD, I actually gave it to the kid who'd done the translating. He was all excited. It's, it's just a cool little interaction with the local people there in Kazakhstan that I will I'll always remember. So back to the race itself. Now, 
when the teams were leaving Berlin to head to the airport there in Germany, uh, the first five teams to leave, they're all part of that five-team alliance that formed in Colombia. So they're still tight, but we're starting to see some cracks form. Uh, Will and James are mentioning now that their core alliance is really with Chi and Hung and, and Riley and Madison. Uh, so not, not so much the other two in the alliance. And Hung and Chi uh, are saying how they aren't real happy with Gary and D'Angelo. They didn't feel like that Gary and D'Angelo are helping them the way they're helping those the football players. So that really leaves Gary and D'Angelo and Eshwar and, and Aparna kind of out in the cold. They're part of the five-person alliance, but not as tight as, as the other three. Speaking of the cold, yeah, you like that segue? Uh, speaking of the cold, uh, there's no more tropical vibes like they had in Trinidad when they first started the amazing race. Now they're in Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan in the wintertime, this is probably November, early December, it is freezing. The winds come in off these flat plains. It's just brutally cold in that place. I wore my heaviest coat while I was there and I was still miserable. So now we see why people like Riley and Masson had such huge backpacks because they had to be packing their winter gear, their winter hats, and they're going to need every bit of it for this leg of the challenge. Uh, a little, little, one more story, a little story about the cold in Kazakhstan. Uh, the city I was working in had been built using Russian central planning uh, long ago, quite a while back. It included one giant steam furnace for the entire town instead of every home, every business having an individual furnace. Uh, what that means is if you lived real close to the steam plant, you had more hot heat than you can imagine. Your, your house was kind of hot all the time. If you lived on the far side, away from the steam plant, on the far side of town, there was nev never enough heat. It was always cold because the, the heat would run out before it got to you. So people tried to request housing based on the distance from that city furnace. The, the nice part was halfway between where you got just the right amount of heat. Cra crazy place to live, absolutely crazy. So. We see all the teams now, they're in Almaty, they're heading to their first checkpoint uh, or their first uh, leg of the race. How amazing is it? We see Leo and Alana in a taxi and we, we learn that Leo actually speaks some Kazakhstan. I guess he lived in Russia, taught English to Russian kids, but there were some Kazakhs in there as well. So he learned how to speak Kazakhstan. How amazing is it? He speaks that language and he's in Kazakhstan. Now, from my own personal experience, uh, almost everyone in the country speaks uh, Kazakhstan and, and Russian, it seems like. Uh, a fair amount also speak English uh, amongst business people and such. So really, if you speak any one of the, those three languages, you should be okay. But still cool, he speaks Kazakh, right? All right, so the first detour we see, the first challenge of this part of the race is at the Kazakh Film Studio in Almaty, the capital. Uh, you have two choices. Either team can either watch an action scene being filmed and then answer questions about this action scene, or they can become a stuntman and perform a complex choreographed action fight scene. It looks so cool. Uh, now, personally, I would have much rather done the the stunt scene just because it looks like a lot of fun. Uh, and it seems like most of the teams thought otherwise because only Leo and Alana and Hung and Chi choose to do uh, the memory, watching the action scene and answering questions. Eventually, Haley and Kaylin also have to do that because the stunt scenes are filled up. There's no more slots for them to do that. Uh, but all the rest of the teams, the other four teams all choose to do the, uh, the, the stunt actions and those three do the uh, watching the action scene and answering questions. Now, about these questions, it's four questions. It's a big fight that's taking place everywhere. There is zero chance of getting it right in the first attempt. Uh, but fortunately, the same questions are asked after every round. So if you miss the questions, you have to watch this action scene over again and then get asked the same question. So after they miss it the first time, it's just a matter of remembering what those four questions were, how many axes were used, how many spears were used, things like that, and, and answer uh, when you're asked again. And sure enough, Hung and Chi get, get the answers all right on the second go around, as did Haley and Kaylin when they showed up and did the competition as well. Leo and Alana, however, they had some major problems with it. It all related to, to one question about how many spears were used. Uh, they kept having problems counting the spears. There were some flags that looked like they were mounted on spears, but those didn't actually count. It took them 10 times of watching this action sequence before they finally got the questions right. That put them in last place by quite a bit behind everybody else. Meanwhile, with the stunt scenes, the stunt actions, uh, Riley and Madison, they made it look easy. They went through the whole thing, choreographed fight scene. Uh, it looks like they completed the detour in, in a single attempt. So they're, they're quickly done and on to the next challenge. Eshwar and Aparna, on the other hand, uh, it was a lot of fun watching them do it because the first time, maybe the first two times, they were stopped. They said, y'all aren't yelling enough. You aren't loud enough. 
So after that, they just start yelling at everything, everyone, whether they're fighting anyone or not, they're just running down the walls, yelling at the top of their lungs. It's it fun watching these two uh, yelling and having to, to really get vocal uh, with the way they did the stunt scenes. And it worked. They, they completed the challenge as well. So it was, a, it was fun watching everyone do these stunt challenges. Uh, but before we actually got to the very the stunt challenges and the, uh, the action scenes, uh, remember Haley and Kaylin came in last place. So they have to do an extra challenge, a speed bump that no one else has to do. Well, it turns out that their speed challenge is to apply fake beards to each other. Uh, it's not too hard. It doesn't seem like it took too much time, but they live, leave these beards on for the whole rest of the rest of the race, uh, this leg of the race. It certainly got a lot of attention from the bystanders. It was pretty funny. Uh, it does make me wonder, uh, the speed bump was putting on beards. What would have happened if Riley and Madison uh, were the ones that had gotten the speed bump instead since they already had those big beards? I don't know, we'll, we'll never find out, but they look pretty funny wearing those beards. So at this point in time, Leo and Alana are, are way behind everyone else because it took them so long to complete the challenge. Everyone else is headed, uh, to, the, to the next challenge, which consists of this, taking a taxi to a remote nomad village uh, where they'll have to do a little challenge we'll talk about. Now I noticed that Hung and Chi did something very smart uh, at this point in time. They actually asked their taxi driver, they said, do you speak English? Uh, and he got him to confirm and actually talk a little bit so they knew he spoke English before they got in the taxi. Just such a little bitty thing that you could do that really could help you. Uh, communication is so important in this race. So I, I think it was smart to ask if he spoke English before they actually hopped in the taxi, just in case there were any issues. So when all these teams start reaching the nomadic village, uh, and it does appear cold, and it does appear out in the middle of nowhere, uh, we discover yet another yield box. Now remember this yield box can be used to slow down one, one of the other teams behind you by either 10 or 20 minutes. Uh, Will and James are the only team that's used their hourglass at a yield box so far, and we now learn that there are only two more legs of the amazing race after this segment where the yield box can be used. I'm amazed that there hasn't been more use of it by the teams at the back so far it can make the difference between whether you stay or not. But so far only one team is, has used uh, the yield box. Uh, but once in the village, we learned that each team must select an empty yurt and a yurt is kind of a, a super fancy round tent, picture glamping and all of that. Uh, and they have to fill it up with rugs and pillows and such to match the already example set up yurt. But there's a kicker. There's a boiled lamb's head that's in the tent that isn't in the original supplies that, that are tied off on a camel. Uh, that sheep's head, it really looks bad. <laughs> I couldn't resist, guys. Uh, instead, they have to obtain that sheep's head from the village women who are boiling the heads in a big old pot. Will and James are the first to get the head, uh, and, and they get a head as a result and complete this leg of the challenge first. <laughs> the puns just keep coming. All right, uh, the football players, on the other hand, they can't finish their yurt inspection because they don't know where to go to find this lamb's head. It's a bunch of women standing around a pot boiling it and they don't know that. Uh, but Hung tells them where to go. They ask her and she says, oh, it's over there. She, she just got through in, in Berlin saying that she was tired of helping them because they don't help her back. They took her taxi. Uh, she got upset with them. She said she wouldn't get help them anymore. But then they ask her the question and she helps them. She realizes right after that she shouldn't have uh, she tells, she says, ah, I can't believe I did that and, and everything. She's just, she was just being nice. She, it's hard to be ruthless to play the game. So she realizes she probably screwed up by telling them where, uh, where to go get the heads, but she did. But now with five of the seven teams either already done or are still working on their yurts, uh, Haley and Kaylin uh, finally show up with only Leo and Alana behind them. Uh, and they do exactly what needs to be done. They use the yield on the dating couple. Now, of course they they do so only after some encouragement from Will and James, who were just completing that part of the challenge, uh, who, who started yelling at them saying, ah, oh, you, you got to use it, you got to use it. Well, uh, Will and James have been targeting Leo and Alana for, for the last few episodes. They viewed them as their biggest target and their biggest threat. So of course, they're going to try to talk Haley and Kalen into using the yield. But it made sense for those two. Why wouldn't you do it when you're in second to last place? Make sure you yield the last place team to help you out. Make sure that you don't go home this particular week. So they, they use the yield uh, as should be expected. Now, it's, it's a little unfortunate. Leo and Alana, they show them in the taxi saying, well, Haley and Kaylin, we're friends with them. They wouldn't use the yield on us. Well, when, when you're fighting with that other team for last place, you do what you have to do. And they don't seem so upset when they see what was done. I think they understand it was the, it was the right play to make. Uh, but eventually we see the team starting to complete uh, the yurts and moving on to the last leg 
of, of this leg of the race. Uh, so for the final challenge of this, this part of the leg, the teams must travel to a huge meat market and find the clue box, which actually turns out to be hidden on an upstairs balcony, uh, we find out. Now this place is huge. Uh, there's raw meat, bones hung up all over. There's dozens and dozens of booths hung up in this giant market hall. It, it makes me wonder, why do you go to this booth instead of this booth? Because they all look completely identical to me, but there's just meat and uh, produce everywhere. Uh, and it turns out the, the clue is actually on an upstairs balcony. Uh, now, Will and James find that clue first, but they don't tell Riley and Madison, the volleyball players, where it is because they really want to, uh, to finish first place uh, in, in this leg of the challenge. Uh, so they don't tell them. But some local workers see Riley and Madison, know that they don't belong there, and they point out to where the, the clues are. They know what they're looking for. So they turn out really to be still closely behind in second place behind Will and James after finding the clue. Uh, as you find this clue in the meat market from there, it's a race in taxis back downtown to a park to check in. Now, I was worried for Haley and Kaylin because after they found their clue uh, and went out to get a taxi, they had a hard time finding a taxi that would take them to the park. Uh, maybe should, they should have removed those beards first and, and they would have gotten a little more attention from the taxi drivers and, and not so many funny looks of people just driving on by. But eventually they catch a taxi uh, and, and they're heading to the parks as well. Now, a quick aside, uh, it feels like these teams are in the middle of absolute nowhere. Yeah, Kazakhstan, it's not exactly the most Western of nations and all that. Seems like they're in the middle of nowhere until you see them on the road and they pass by a Hardy's hamburger restaurant. So no matter where you are in the world, you're still gonna see a little Western influence creeping in uh, when you least expect it. Uh, but with that being said, eventually we see everyone starting to arrive at the park itself. And as it turns out, Will and James hold onto the lead for a first place finish. I believe this is the second time they finished in first place. They went a trip to Las Vegas in addition to, to the first place finish. Uh, so they finish in first. In second place, the pro volleyball players, Riley and Madison. In third place, the, the parents, uh, the married couple, uh, Hung and Chi. In fourth place, the NFL football players, Gary and D'Angelo. In fifth place, Haley and Kalen. They actually pass uh, Eshwar and Aparna, who had a little difficulty uh, putting some of the stuff together in the yurt. But uh, so Haley and, and Kaylin come in fifth. In sixth place, Eshwar and Aparna. And finally in last place, and I don't think they were even that close to Eshwar and Aparna. I think there could have been a decent lag between sixth and seventh place. But eventually Leo and Alana uh, show up in last place. And unfortunately for them, this is not an elimination leg. Leo and Alana, the dating couple, have been eliminated. I hated to see it. I thought they were a fun couple. I really hoped they were going to get a chance to kind of go against uh, Will and James a little bit, but it wasn't to be. They've been eliminated. What did they do wrong? I, I don't think strategy-wise they did anything wrong. Uh, the action scene, having their power recollection, they just, you know, taking 10 times, that's, that's just tough to recover from. I don't know if the yield would have made a difference or not. I have a feeling that uh, Haley and Kaylin probably finished more than 20 minutes ahead of Leo and Alana anyway. Uh, but you never, we never will know. It was still the right play for Haley and Kaylin to play that yield. But again, Leo and Alana are, are complete, are, are finished. They've been eliminated. So now we're down to, to six teams left. Uh, and I have a feeling this is probably the end of Kazakhstan. They'll probably be taking off to, to another location next. Uh, so I can hardly wait to see uh, where, where their next leg of the race is going to take place. And we're down to five teams. They're part of this five-team alliance. And then, Leah, uh, then uh, uh, Haley and Kalen are kind of separate from them. But I think this alliance is done for. It's going to start falling apart real quick. There's not enough teams otherwise. So it's going to be fun watching the next leg. Guys, y'all have a fantastic week. I will be back to cover episode A of The Amazing Race uh, once it airs. Y'all have a great one. Safe travels, guys. Cheers, my friends. Bye.